Some of you may have heard the 10 meter band or the 28 megahertz band has been going absolutely bananas over the last few weeks. So I decided I wanted to get in on all of the DX that have been happening by building myself a new antenna. The antenna that I'm gonna to build today is also known as the flower pot antenna. It just uses a little bit of coax and a little bit of wire and that's all that you really need to get on the air. Plus it also doubles as a great portable antenna. I'm going to string this on a uh, fiberglass pole, a fishing pole, DX commander pole, that type of thing. And it's really easy to build and to set up. So let's jump over to the workbench and let's start some construction work. All right, so I thought that it would be handy to start off with a bit of a diagram of what we're actually building today. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need a bit of wire. Any sort of wire that's one to one and a half millimeters long will be fine, sort of um, 18, 20 gauge wire will be okay. So we're gonna, basically this is our wire that we're going to, to have. Now this wire, um, I wanna sort of have roughly a frequency of about 28.5 megahertz. So that's going to be my, my center frequency and hopefully that'll cover down to the FT8 portion which is where I um, operate sort of the bottom end of 28 megahertz. And then we'll see how far up we can go. Maybe we can get up to sort of 29.7 megahertz maybe with the tuner and the radio. We'll see how much bandwidth we get so that I can operate on the FM portion. Uh, this is the SSB portion. And then, uh, as I said, down to 28 uh, decimal, what is it, 087, I think it is, uh, is, is FT8, so, um, or FT8CW. We're gonna have roughly, this is gonna be about 2,500 millimeters long, about a, about a quarter wave on 10 meters. But you can trim this and you can experiment with what frequency you're, you end up out with, but we're gonna start off with 2,500 millimeters. Sorry, everything's gonna be in millimeters because I'm in Australia, so you can convert this to inches uh, if, you, if you need. Then uh, once we get our wire and we measure it out to that length, what we're going to do is we're going to have our coax. So we just draw our, this is our, this is our RG58. This is gonna be RG58 coax, that's all that we need. And uh, we're gonna have a join here. The center conductor is going to join to this piece of wire here. So there's our center conductor. The braid is not going to join to anything. We're just gonna have the braid um, cut off here. So just basically strip back the wire and we're gonna have the center conductor connected at this point uh, right here. And what we'll do is we'll put a bit of heat shrink or a bit of tape over, over this point just here. So that we can, uh, we can protect it if we've got it outside in the weather. This measurement is gonna be slightly less. Um, we're going to have this at about 20, 24, about 50 meters, uh, 50 meters, 50 millimeters shorter, something like that. So 24, 50 millimeters. So then what we do is, is once we measure to this point, we wanna put a piece, of, uh, a piece of tape. So what we'll do is um, you can just put a bit of, just one, one bit of electrical tape, uh, any color you want, just as long as you can see it because this is where the beginning of our choke is going to start. Its job is to stop any common mode current from flowing back down the cable and to basically effectively disconnect and say that this is the end of, of our uh, antenna. So basically what this is, is it's a vertical dipole with the feed point basically here. So this is one half of the dipole and the other half of the dipole is uh, this bottom bit here. So we want to uh, put the choke here to say this is the end, uh, of the of the antenna and the rest of the, the rest is the transmission line. Now we can do this a couple of ways. We can use a, um, a toroid such as this. This is an FT two forty dash forty three. We can wind some turns of RG fifty eight through this and use this. Now um, I might do this in a future video, but for now we're not going to use uh, one of these. We're just going to use a fifty millimeter piece of PVC pipe as our former. And what we're going to do is we're gonna wrap about uh, 23, 24 turns. You can experiment uh, with this value on here. So what we do is we drill a hole in one end of this PVC. So where the tape, uh, the tape where we've measured our 24, 50 millimeters, we're going to go through the hole and then we're going to basically wrap the, oh, excuse my drawing here. We're gonna wrap the coax around, oh dear, this is terrible, but I think you get the idea. We're gonna wrap a coil around this PVC former. And then uh, we're gonna wrap, yeah, about 23, 
so 23, 24 turns. And then uh, once we get to the end, we're gonna drill another hole and then our coax will come out and this will go uh, down to our radio, which can be any length that we that we want to, to get back to the radio. All right, so I've just been outside to do a little bit of a measurement to make it a bit easier for myself. So I've got a bit of PVC, I've got to cut it to length because I've got a long length of it and I've just done a mock coil it's 150 millimeters long, so that's how long you'll need to make the PVC former. And it is 4.32 meters of coax from this spot, roughly around about this spot here, down to uh, the end of the coil for 20, uh, about 24 turns. I'm gonna go with 24, because then I can always take some off. So, uh, so that's the length we need. So we know that we need 4.32 meters worth of coax, plus the 2.4, plus the five meters. So it ends up being about about oh, 12, 13 meters worth of coax. So that's what we need, that's what we're gonna cut it at, and then we can start winding this coil. So I've got my bits here now. I found some DX10 wire, which is from my DX Commander build, which I've got a little bit of excess there, so I'm gonna use that for my wire. And I've got some uh, RG58 here on a spool. So let's start off with measuring out the wire. So I need two and a half meters worth. All right, there's my two and a half meters of wire now. Now you can cut it a little bit longer if you wanna sort of trim some off and experiment a little bit, but I'm gonna start off with that. So we'll see how we go. So there's that wire done. Let's do the coaxial cable. All right, so I've fast forwarded and I've gone outside and cut this bit of PVC and I've drilled two holes. Now this hole, I didn't realize I actually drilled it too large, but the hole size that you need is six millimeters for RG58. So what I've done is I've now wound 24 uh, turns uh, onto this 50 millimeter former. So now a turn is a full full turn. So when it comes into the, uh, uh, the uh, former here, you have to count one turn from once it's done one full turn. So one, two, three, four. 23, 24. And I've also pre uh, prepared the other end. So I've measured the, the two, two, four, five, zero millimeters um, from one end of this uh, coil. And what I've done is I have taken the uh, center, the uh, trimmed the braid off just about 10 millimeters here from the end. And I've just put a bit of heat shrink over the end there so it doesn't short out with this center piece. So now what we need to do is, is we need to get our length of wire and solder that onto the end of here. Bit of heat shrink over the whole assembly, and then we're ready to actually go and test this antenna. Now, it's a good idea to seal this because we don't want any water getting in the end of that. Um, additionally, too, if you're gonna leave this outside permanently where the weather can be a problem, might be good to put a bit of uh, glue line heat shrink or seal the other end of the wire as well. So I've chucked the old PL259 on now. So our antenna is now complete and built. I've, as I said, mounted the um, antenna onto this fiberglass tube which is just a fishing pole and you can see I've just taped the top there and it's just it's just loose at the moment this is just slid over the top and then I've got my coax coming down here and we're gonna plug that into the analyzer to see what the SWR sweeps like we're about 1.1.3 1. 1. to 1 at 28.47 so the dip is there I think the antenna is probably a little bit close to the house here so that might account for why it's just a tad bit too high let's go down a little bit lower so 1.1.6 1. 1. down at 27 if we go down a little bit further so we can go all the way down to almost to 27 megs even and it's three to one let's go up back up to 29 so way up past 30 megahertz so the three to one bandwidth is fine. We can tune that in with the tuner and the radio. At the moment, this is only, the bottom of the antenna is only a couple of meters off the ground. I reckon if we get that a lot higher, it's gonna work a lot better. So, all right, let's hook it up to a radio and see how it goes. And I'm hearing the beacon, which is in uh, Sydney.
looks like the antenna is receiving quite well. Oh, there's a beacon. I've literally had it on FT8 for like 30 seconds and you can already see that there's Japan and China coming in. So it's, uh, I mean, signals are, they're not super strong, but they are there at the moment. So it is uh, hearing. If I switch, also interestingly, if I switch to the DX Commander, DX Commander is a little bit quieter, but I can't hear those FT8 signals as well. Um, they're still they're still decoding. They're still showing up on the screen. Not really a fair comparison, though, of course, because the uh, DX Commander sits at ground level, and the this antenna is elevated actually quite high now. Now I've also built one of these antennas for six meters as well. If you want to check that out, then there will be a link to the video right here. Seventy three and a good DX, everyone.